Hello everyone, myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. I welcome you all in this video. So let's begin. First of all, let me inform you that we have launched the live courses for RBI Sabi Nabad. If you want to check out about the courses, you can do so on our application as well as on our website, which is www.anujandal.in. You can also call us or mail us if you have any query in your preparation. Plus, you can also post your query on the discussions.anujandal.in. I hope that you all have downloaded the PDF of the session from the Telegram channel by now. And if you hadn't, then please do so because I'm beginning with the first question, okay? And it is important for you to have the PDF beside you so that you can understand the content better. Okay, so the very first question that we have is, which institute host houses the new, new census data workstation? So here we have the five options out of which IIT Delhi guys is the right answer. Now, there is nothing much to this news it's just that a new center or we can say a new office of uh, the registrar general and census commission has been established and that office is located at the economics lab which is a part of the department of humanities and social sciences at iit delhi so that is the census data workstation that has been established apart from this the inauguration of this data center or uh, basically workstation was done by the registrar general and census commissioner of india dr vivek joshi so that was all about the news now we have the second question so where is the Gati Shakti Vishwavidyalaya located? So guys, this is a really important question. The institute is located at Vadodara. So let's have a look at the news itself. First of all, this Gati Shakti Vishwavidyalaya is not a new institution that is going to be established or that was constructed in Vadodara. It's just that already we had the National Rail and Transportation Institute and now this institution is going to be transformed or basically the name of this NRTI is going to be changed into Gati Shakti Vishwavidyalaya. Okay, and obviously it is a part of the Gati Shakti plan in order to uh, basically improve the infrastructure, construction and fast pace it. So that is the basic idea of Gati Shakti uh, program. So here, in order to transform this institution, into the Gati Shakti Vishwavidyalaya, Union Cabinet will introduce the Central Universities Amendment to, uh, Bill 2022 into the monsoon session of the Parliament, which is going to begin on July 18. So during that session, this will be uh, introduced and it is going to amend the Universities, Central Universities Act of 2009. And guys, the portions that I have underlined here are important for you to remember because these are very factual in nature and they can be directly asked. So do remember the year of this Central Universities Act and do remember the location of this NRTI institution which is a deemed to be a university but at present uh, it is going to be changed into Gati Shakti Vishwavidyalaya once it gets approval in the parliament. So the next question is, uh, which of the following is not a sub-scheme under the mission Shakti? So here guys, you have Sambal, you have Samarthi, Sashakt, both A and B and both A and C. Here the right answer is option C. Sashakt guys is not a component or a sub-scheme of the mission Shakti. Now I hope that you remember that under the mission Shakti, Ministry of Women and Child Development has merged all the, all the women empowerment schemes. So now let's know about the news. I have already told you that the guidelines have been released. So basically the guidelines detail about the implementation, uh, what stakeholders would be involved and how basically this mission will be implemented on the ground that is there in the guidelines. Okay, And these uh, guidelines are not very important from your exam point of view. I'm talking about both the phases, phase one as well as phase Two, okay, only the components of the scheme are important or the schemes that have been merged under the mission, uh, mission Shakti are important. Okay, so first of all, let's know that this mission Shakti is under implementation for the duration of 2021 to 2022 to 25 to 26. Okay, so this is the period of 15th finance commission as well. So that is all to this news. Now let's have a look at the sub schemes of the 
uh, mission shakti first we have the sambal so under this sambal we have the one stop centers we have the women helpline we have beti bachao beti padhao so these schemes have been merged under the sambal component now from the name of the schemes itself you can understand that the sambal component is basically for the security for ensuring the security of women so that is the basic idea of this sambal component and all the schemes that work towards ensuring the safety and security of women have been merged under uh, under this sub scheme okay now here one more important point is uh, nari adalat that is a new component of beti bachao and beti padhao scheme okay so what do the nari adalats do in india so nari adalats is nothing but a group or we can say uh, a panel of women that try to resolve the queries or the uh, issues related to women within the family okay so that is the basic idea then we have samarthya so this component of the mission shakti aims to empower women so ujwala scheme swadhar griha scheme working women hostel national crest scheme for children of working mothers pradhan mantri matru vandana yojana are all under are all covered under this samarthya scheme okay do remember this pradhan mantri matru vandana yojana is already there under the integrated child development scheme so basically now this scheme is going to be implemented integratively under the mission shakti as well as mission vatsal okay because it has its connection to the mother as well as to the child now a new component of gap funding for economic empowerment of women has been introduced in the guidelines and this is basically to ensure that uh, the ministry has enough funds enough resources to implement the scheme on the ground so that is all about this uh, scheme from the phase 1 perspective moving on to the next question which country organized the bimstech expert group on cyber security cooperation so basically the meeting of this group was held and india organized it as well as chaired this meeting okay now the national security council secretariat of india organized this meeting in new delhi and this was chaired by the coordinator rajesh pant okay so do remember the person who chaired this meeting now guys participant countries are these obviously these countries are the countries which are uh, which are surrounding the bay of bengal now bhutan and nepal do not surround bay of bengal but still we have included bimstech uh, these two countries in bimstech so do remember the names of the member countries of bimstech and during the meeting it was decided that an action plan will be formulated to boost or strengthen the information and communication technologies so that the surveillance in the bay of bengal region and economic prosperity both can be achieved so that is the basic object objective which state ut has launched the sahabhagita scheme to increase the involvement of the residential welfare societies uh, or associations in optimal tax collection and waste management systems so here guys delhi is the right answer now this scheme was launched by the lg of delhi lieutenant governor who is vinay kumar saxena he was former uh, he was pri prior to this appointment he was the chairman of kvic khadi and village uh, council so it has uh, basically delhi government has launched the sahabhagita scheme and the basic purpose of this scheme is to include or basically uh, incentivize the people of the residential welfare association to pay their property taxes and associated taxes in time and in full amount full amount as in the due amount that is due on their part and secondly in waste management okay so that is the basic idea of this scheme apart from this you don't have to go into too much of its detail moving ahead which country's telecom company has developed the world's fastest uh, graphics ram chip so here the right answer is south korea so this chip has been developed by samsung now which is based in seoul okay now the chip ram chip is dynamic random access 
memory chip and it is guys the world's fastest graphics drum chip and it has been launched by samsung which agri startup has partnered with sbi general insurance and future general insurance uh, india insurance company to provide insurance solutions for farms so here nurture.com is the name of the agri tech startup that has partnered with these two insurance companies and the basic purpose is to increase the insurance pen insurance penetration in the rural rural india that is the basic idea okay so this nurture.com is going to provide the insurance products the general insurance product to the rural population so that is the basic idea which indian city has featured in the time magazines world's 50 greatest places of 2022 list so here guys it is ahmedabad it is the first city of india that entered into unesco's world heritage cities list and now it has got a very prominent place in this world's 50 greatest places list released by times magazine now apart from this do remember a total of 50 places were there and then india at this moment has four cities which are there in the unesco world heritage cities list so first is your Ahmedabad. then in 2019 became jaipur became the second city to enter into the list then in 2020 uh, gwalior and orcha became your third and fourth, fourth city to enter into the unesco's world heritage cities list till which date is the scheme for rebate and state rebate of state and central taxes and levies extended so here the right answer is option a okay now basically ministry of commerce and industry has extended the rebate of state and central taxes and levies scheme under the scheme basically the taxes that the exporters have paid on the exported product these taxes uh, are basically waived off not completely a little portion of that tax is waived off because it is a rebate not the complete waiver of the taxes okay so rebate is given to promote export so that is the basic idea earlier only the state level taxes were given the rebate now the central taxes have also been included under the scheme which has now been in, uh, extended to march 31st 2024 do remember the extension because extension related questions are asked in the examination very often now under the scheme basically uh, the textile and april textile april and uh, allied products their export is supported okay so the waiver is only provided waiver or we can say rebate is only provided on the products of the textile industry okay so do remember this thing because we also have another scheme which is remission of duties and taxes on exported products so what is the basic difference between these two schemes this scheme is for your textile products whereas this scheme is uh, for the merchandise or export so it includes all the sectors okay so it is a broad scheme and it is a specific scheme that only caters to the textile industry but it includes a merchandise export which has a wide range of application okay the last question is with which bank has niit institute of finance banking and insurance partnered to build new age digital talent so here hdfc bank is the right answer okay so uh, niit institute of finance banking and insurance which is a subsidiary of niit limited uh, it has partnered with the HDFC bank and the basic purpose of this partnership is first of all to train the banking officials in the digital technology and secondly the purpose of this partnership is to recruit more data engineers okay so that is the basic idea of this uh, pro partnership and one more thing that the first learning program under this partnership will be launched and that program will be known as HDFC bank data digits postgraduate program in data engineering through this partnership hdfc bank has also launched a new program which is called data 
digits and it is a certification program okay for the uh, in data engineers okay so that is all about this news i hope that you have understood it well so here guys i would like to say goodbye to you all thank you so much for watching the video have a good day